If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this upcoming episode of Mind Pump, uh, we talk about, well, first off, Justin sings a beautiful song. Oh my God, just wait. Sounds just like Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Don't lie. In my opinion. Uh, we talk about our go-to dance moves. Uh, Adam's got some great insight on that. Mm. Total secret. And uh, I try to talk the guys into going to, into a nudist colony. Which and, uh, oh, he always does. And then we get into fitness. We talk about high school coaches and how they train deadlifts and squats and uh, some of the pitfalls of training young athletes. We talk about opening a gym fresh out of college. You're not going to want to miss that advice if you're a potential entrepreneur. Hashtag don't do it. We also talk about the decent amount of lean body mass you should have for your size. And then at the end, we talk about sugar detoxes. Um, also, we're going to be getting a lot of new listeners uh, coming up now. Uh, we've been on a few podcasts, so a lot of you may be first-time Mind Pump listeners, and we talked about this amongst ourselves and what we wanted to do is put together a starter pack or a I'm starter super bundle. excited for this, this yeah. is, like if when you break down the total on this this is like over $300 value worth of stuff and if we all agreed that if we were to pick like okay what programs what are the essentials yeah the yeah. essentials that everybody should at the bare minimum have yeah what would we do and, and here's the thing like we we examined like why we do what we do and really why we do what we do is we want to deliver excellent information and give people the tools that they can have to train themselves efficiently and effectively so they can get all the results that they want, but also do it in a way where they don't develop muscle imbalances, where they've got great movement and they're not wasting time in the gym. They have more time on their hands to do the things that they love to do. So really just pouring all of our expertise into expert programming. And what we did is we said, look, we got all these new listeners what would we give people to get started? Like if someone wants to get started with, with expert exercise programming, someone wants to come in and get more fit, get stronger, build more muscle, burn more body fat, what would we give them? And it wasn't a single program because we know new people are going to probably need a correctional component. There's some imbalances out there. Yeah, they're going to need a foundational honest. component. They're going to need some help with nutrition and they're going to need guidance along the way. So here's what we did. We've included MAPS Prime, which has a self-assessment tool, MAPS Anabolic, which is our foundational workout program. We've included the nutrition and fasting uh, guide, so it's going to help you with nutrition. And then because you're going to need guidance along the way, especially if you're brand new, we're giving you forum access for free. And our forum is made up of over 2,000 fitness professionals, trainers, competitors, and other like-minded individuals where you can ask them questions, you can post videos of your squat and your deadlift, and where they can help you out. They can help coach you along the way. All of this, if you purchased it separately, about $348, this month, we're going to do it for $147. More than half off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's all for all you new people. That's ridiculous. It's the starter pack or starter bundle. Not quite sure what we're going to name it uh, yet, but it's going to be one of those things. You can find this at mindpumpmedia.com. You are not alone, I am here with you, though you're far away. Oh. I don't know the rest of the song. That was, ins- it was, it was about to inspire me, but then yeah. you who cut was, it short. Who was that? I know that. It's Michael it's, Jackson. It's Michael, dude. Oh. What's wrong with you? That wasn't very Michael-esque. I feel what like what you are you should, talking about? Yeah, I think you need to get higher and grab your crotch. <laughs> Yeah. Whoa, whoa. If you would have done that, I would have got it right okay. away. Okay. Did he right. come? A, did he just? Did, you, did his spirit just go inside of you there? Yeah, a little bit. When you did the, I the, had a little bit of the, the, <laughs> the Jesus. Jesus. Is, are, isn't there rule? Isn't there? Isn't there rule, rules for you guys? Like, there's certain people that you're never supposed to try and right. Dude, you know what? It's funny. And Michael's but, one of them, right? Well, he was he was trying to challenge me to come up with I a know. different song, I know. and so what I was doing was. What I made the mistake when I went one time, I went to go do karaoke and I, I tried to sing a Michael Jackson song and it was like so bad. Like it was the worst. You sang bad? Oh, horribly. Well, one of the most talented, oh, the song one of the most talented humans is He's just like, to ever walk the face of the earth. You just don't, it's like, that's not one I want to Yeah, like try. you don't do him. You and he do- dances, you know what I mean? And, and like he's entertaining as hell and he's got that, yeah, you Whoa. know, like, I just don't have it. Yeah. It just explodes out of you though a little bit. Sometimes. Are you, I feel are like you a big fan. 
I'm a huge fan of Michael really? Jackson. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Did you ever get, I never watched him live. Did he's, you like he's him? He's one with, of those ones that I, I wish uh, that I wouldn't saw. And uh, there was a several times been epic. where I was like, oh, you know what? He's coming nearby. I should go get this and that. And I'm like, uh, he'll be around another I time. never, and I was never a huge fan. I liked what? Michael Jackson. No, never. Wow. Dude. I could sense the creepiness. Sometimes. I think, I think a little less of you now. No, it's the cre- it's. I could sense that he's a creepy guy. Oh, man. All <laughs> no, you I'm couldn't. You. All no, fame. you could Wait a minute. Not. Hold on a second. No. How could you not sense the creepiness? The guy's fucking weird. Uh, he, had a, he had a monkey named Bubbles. Yeah. That's, that's all. He made his own playground. You're like, you're like Captain TMZ over here. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, just oh, made oh, the tabloid. Yeah, yeah. I liked his music. It's real life. I liked his music when it was like Motown funk a little bit. You know yeah. what I'm talking about? Yeah. When it was like, I've like, when he didn't jack, no, 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 jack up his nose. You know what I'm talking about? He's way better than he did. I've liked everything he's done because I feel like him and his sister both have evolved their music. It, with time that's what has made them so timeless and awesome is that they're one of those bands Aerosmith did a good job of doing this also like there's yeah. there's some bands and some people that are just so talented that even though they have a sound to their to the way they sing or whatever or yeah. their band they if they've been around for 20 30 like years Usher tries really hard to sound like him Usher. not even close no yeah. it, it, he dances like him though I'll give he him does. That. He, he does. He does a good job. Awesome with that. Yeah. yeah no, I think true. what's his name? What's the other guy? Bruno Mars is very talented. He is. I, very talented. I wish like he sung yeah, more I've songs like live. Michael. Yeah. 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 He did that one with the, the Uptown Funk or whatever. That was so good. It was just great. He just it's, came. That's through the only again. song I like of his. Yeah. He's it's a, not even his. It's like a, it's the the band that plays guy. behind him. Bruno Mars is a little guy. He's a little guy. Like how tall? Like real little. Really? Yeah. Like looks Filipino, right? Yeah, yeah, or Hawaiian. He's got, I don't know. yeah, he's got the Hawaiian. Wasn't Filipino he a movie. Michael Jackson impersonator back in the day? Was he when he was a little kid? That I could make see sense. It. Yeah, I could see. Yeah, that. yeah. I, mean, I may, he, I might be making that up. Yeah, we're, you could we're be all talking out of our ass. He's talented. Mm-hmm. He was yeah. talented. He was he was a decent he was a decent show. I didn't, I wasn't impressed. It wasn't. Oh, like you a, saw him? Yeah, no, I've seen I've seen him at least once. I might have seen him twice. You guys have seen a lot of concerts. I've seen very few. Mm. Yeah, I've seen you want to know the concerts? What's your favorite one? So. I w- I've never gone to a concert. Actually, one. I went to one concert voluntarily. The rest of them were all I was you were forced. Dr- drugged too. Yeah. So as a kid, <laughs> as a kid, my first concert ever, my parents drugged me to Yanni. No, they did yes, not, dude. Dude, do you guys remember Yanni? Wow. I don't. Oh, Yanni, come on. There was no vocals. It was all synthesizers. Oh wow. And he was this Greek dude with like you've probably heard it in an elevator. Curly, like curly, kind of greasy looking mm-hmm. hair. And he'd get all fucking into it, man. He yeah. play yeah. the, the the keyboard. He's and he'd talented, but get crazy. Like, come on. And I, yeah. and so check this out. So we went to the concert. I was like, that's 12. almost bad as like Michael Bolton, dude. I was, was like, that like your follow up concert. So so you know how you ever seen your parents dance? How embarrassing that is. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah. my god. Ugh. Yeah, so I'm 12. Me and my cousin went yeah. because our parents pulled us, <laughs> and this guy's playing the synthesizers like crazy. Yeah. And like my uncle and my aunt, my mom and my dad, they're like, "God mm. damn, it's so good! Oh my god!" And they all start kind of like <laughs> dancing, swing, and yeah. throwing their hands all weird. And I'm just like, yeah. "I'm gonna, I'm Bunch totally gonna awkward white people just yeah, yeah, I'm gonna kill myself." Right what, now. What, what, what was the move before the fist pump? What were, what would you do when that happens? Like some music overwhelms you with with emotion. It's a lot of shoulders. It's like this. It's like. <laughs> Is you that what you like kind of lean back? Well, that's a that's a good question, you hit right? You. Like that's a good question. What's your go to like if like you're really m- driven to? D- There's Yanni right there. Look at the picture. Oh, he's handsome. Man, he's handsome. He's got an incredible he's got a little stash. Incredible stash. Yeah. If I had hair, I'd grow it like that yeah. for sure. If Damn, my- it's too bad you don't. <laughs> It'd be too much actually. <laughs> so would. imagine. So what's this? Here, real quick. What is your go to? Like you're just. And I'm not talking about your dance move where like, oh, I got to dance. My wife's making me dance or whatever. Mm. Like the music literally like, I got to fucking dance right now. Like what's your move? I just shift, man. What do you mean? Yeah, I shift left to right. You could actually, you've got moves though. I've seen you yeah. dance. But the, the problem is like it turns into like, I pretend to be like Michael Jackson and then it gets really bad. Really? Yeah. Cause like <clears throat> we're on different, we're on different rhythms. Me and my wife always, she does a lot of like bouncy stuff. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm I'm just like more of a shifty, you know, left to right kind of a, you know, move. And yeah. So it's like sometimes it syncs up and it's like, yeah, that song was awesome. And then the next one, we're just like fucking hitting each other. And, you know, <laughs> it just doesn't work. What about Adam? What's your move? Well, like, I, like your move, like the music's hitting I like you. To, I, like you to th- move. I like to think that I can feel the music, but, it, you know, if I got to and I'm, I'm not sure, you, you, all else fails, you jump. 
He just, he just <laughs> jumped. It just doesn't matter, right? Yeah. You just see it just jump to the music, bro. It's just okay. Oh, big, right. ass, big ass Adam jumping <laughs> around. The whole, just fucking floor shakes. Just, yeah, just, everybody just jumps. Jump around. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you worst case scenario, if I can't quite get the beat right, I can't feel my groove, which I like to think I can do that for with most music, then all else fails, just start jumping. See, for yeah. me, one of the reasons why I like like techno or electronic music is because there's, you could just, <laughs> nobody really, Italian. you don't have to dance. Because you yeah. can't miss a beat. It's yeah. so fast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he, that's techno. I don't yeah. know what you were doing, Adam. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you were, I don't you were, know. You were doing something I'm weird there. Music. Justin is obviously way better with sound effects than I am, but you got the point. <laughs> you got the point. It was fast. It's you did fast. Like a- <laughs> <laughs> Mariachi. No, that sounds. Yeah, yeah. No, I feel like that's it's like a, techno mariachi. That's like right? a silent film music that you just yeah. did. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's like the villain coming out from you know the woods. The point is that it's lots of beats really fast, and you can't really be offbeat. So it's perfect for white people. So my my ex used to tell me that I look like I'm boxing because I do this thing with my hands. And she's like, "Why are you doing that? Yeah. Yeah, shadow, Why are you doing that? Shadow box. Yeah. That's not. Left. That's a that's a good go to move. Whatever, right. Dude. All us fellows do the shadow box. And then when I was younger and yeah. if, and if I was dancing with a girl, I was just like, I'm just gonna grind because I'm gonna get mm. something out of this. Yeah. My dancing is horrible, but I'm gonna get close. Yeah. yeah that's the that's Bo- the go to. Music slows down, right? Music yeah. slows down, and you just start thrusting your hips. Oh no, I grind for everything. Fast music, slow just, music. I grind my way to the end. To right? house. Yeah. Just, I could just see you know, an, you know, angry grind. Have an accident. Oh, yeah. I <laughs> totally. grinded too much. <laughs> but Sorry, I, honey, I'm done. I really, I really yeah. dislike dancing. I'm just not. Can't last I, very I'm not long. a big fan of it. Hey, you, um, your girl last weekend went to uh, the place that Refuge. Refuge. How'd yeah. she like it? She loved it. Did she? Yeah, she thought it was really awesome. Um, Sounds like a nightclub. Is it's. Uh... The yeah, she goes to place. nightclubs by herself, yeah. and uh, <laughs> she finds people to bring home for. Her. No, she she it was it's a it's the spa that Adam uh, went to. Oh, you know what I'm talking about? Oh yeah, the with the cold the dip and the hot. Dip. I'm gonna okay. take. I'm gonna. Actually, I want to go to this. By it, the way, well, it, because it's co-ed and it's it's not like your normal foo foo spa. I was impressed, man. Is I'm it? Not, is it? I'm have, not. I'm not a foo foo spa guy. As much as I do the toes and I like all that stuff. Yeah, that's kind of that's interesting. Not, so you say that. Yeah, yeah, it's no. It's a very cool vibe. I would literally. I would go with the three of us. Just three guys. Yeah, I would go. Yeah. I would. Li- I would just. So the spa? Let's spa, everybody. Let's I know do it's, it sounds yeah. off, right? No, it's bit, all right. I'm down. It, why? I mean, can the, we get like a group massage? Whoa. Well, the massage. Am I going too far now? The massage part of it is the How part that was kind of like meh. What the, what's awesome is the the steam room, the sauna, the hot and cold plunges, like all the pools, because mm-hmm. they have all these separate pools for like you want freezing cold or do you want like kind of cold or do you want just like lukewarm, and then mm-hmm. you have like hot and then super hot, and then you have the saunas and the and the uh, steam rooms. So so, uh, so there's level. And, like, I think fi- we should and do fires that. And, like, and, I think we should do that. Ugh. And you know what else I just I just learned about uh, the other day? Did you guys know that there's a like a I don't know if it's a nudist colony, but it's like a I'm uh, listening. It's in the Santa Cruz Mountains. I can't remember the name of it. Doug knows. You just shake your head, no, Doug. I've, I've heard of it. Oh, he's heard of it. I've heard of it. Yeah. What's the name? Does anybody know the name? I'll look it up. Okay. Justin, you should know I know that. what all the nudist beaches are. That's all. Well, it's like, I guess it's Which, like- Which, by the way, are never- <laughs> They're not <laughs> never. what you hope for. Well, dude, Have you ever been to a nude uh, or topless place that's actually of, like, wow, this is awesome scenery? It's a bunch of meat. Yeah, I'm yeah. not going to check people out. I'm going uh, to be free, Adam. Oh, uh, my God. I want to be free. What a fucking hippie answer uh, right there. Like, yeah. oh, not me. I'm going to check out all the tits that are running around. Are you really? Yeah, absolutely. No no one's going to let you in their nudist colony now. You just let everybody know you Well, this is just between us right now. You know, I'm not telling you. I'm not going to tell anybody else. Nobody's I'm going to tell any owners. I, that's what my like a no. A I want. I think we should yeah. go to a nudist colony because or a nudist beach or something like that because it's good to shed your clothes and be free sometimes. Wow. That is such a hippie. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Oh, there we, it is. Can we hold hands? Lu- uh, Lupin Los Gatos. Lupin. I'm it's fucking lo- down, dude. Yeah. That'd be so fun. I feel like no. None, we, none of these like uh, naked people work out. You know, yeah, I feel the same way. Just it's like flat asses. And no, <laughs> who cares? There's a, there's I'm pl- so free. You know, like yeah, why? Well, yeah, it work out. If I want to be just naked like that, I'll just go get naked in my own backyard. If I had, if I just want to be free and yeah, naked. but it's not the same when you're not around a bunch of people. Mm. That's you're, the freeing part. How do you get the the pe- the free thinkers to lift? You know, what do you mean? I feel like there needs to be a program for there, these hippies. There might be some fit people. You don't know. You have no idea. Uh, well, according to that picture, it doesn't look like look it. Look at that. That's There that. might be one. Come on. That's oh, just one. Okay. There's a few. There's like there's one. There's a few booties. Yeah. There's one in there. Yeah, see? Yeah. 
That's five like reasons. That's to like get a bachelorette. Thanks, Doug. That's like a bachelorette <laughs> yeah. party. They just happen to get there one time out of the. Yeah, family. right. That's <laughs> like the advertisement. You're right. Yeah, of like, course. They're yeah. like, this, this is the first time we ever had four. Okay, ladies, looking. stand right here. We're gonna sell this really hard. Is that guy doing a nude plank on those yeah. other two dudes? That's a little more accurate, right there. Yeah, that, that one is the accuracy. This seems like this does seem like a place you would yeah. go to, though, Sal. You know, what? I feel like there'd be a lot more hair. That's, that's a lot of good looking. Because every time I've been to a nudist beach, there's a lot of hair. Yeah, no, I, just, I've seen. Yeah, I've seen know, a lot wind. of. So here's so wow, what are they oh doing? They're god. balancing someone naked. Oh my god. So here's the thing. See the hiking. <laughs> you know what doesn't look good yeah, though? Like, this is this this is the part that doesn't look good when you're naked, but then you have shoes and socks on. Hmm. So they go hiking and they have hiking boots, Birkenstocks, and then they're naked, and that doesn't look right. Well, and I think if you're gonna be naked. It'd be well, naked. and it also defeats this whole purpose of being like free and grounded. You know, <laughs> then you throw your your high tech boots on, and your, yeah. <laughs> your wankers hanging out, but then you got your high tech boots on. You know it's what like, I would do? Like how hippie and grounded are you really? If you, <laughs> you know, what we should do. Mm. We should go to this the Sloop and Lodge. We should yeah. go there and just wear a t shirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just, just come be, in, just the bottom half off. Just be, yeah, just be naked yeah. from the bottom I down. I told you guys that already. But have a shirt I, that's just long I want to wear socks and shoes. I walk around my house like, like this all the time. No pants, no underwear. Just T-shirt? Just T-shirt. Is it long enough to cover things no, a little bit? my junk is hanging out. Is uh, it really? Just, well, you got long shirts these days. Yeah, well, those I don't wear those ones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> I wear my midriffs. So uh, it, looks like a, okay. I mean, yes. it looks like Adam's in a nightgown. So you see Happy Trail and business. That's what she gets. <laughs> that, that's great. <laughs> yeah, that's in it. business? Yeah, that's what <laughs> you get. So I'm a happy trail to my business, honey. Yeah. She, my girl likes it, man. Well, I don't she know. Dig, she digs she, it. She so. likes you with just a sh- with a I, shirt on yeah, and nothing she, else? We're into weird stuff. That's That's weird. It is different. Um, I like it when she just wears socks around the house. That's so it. what I'm thinking is uh, okay. if the fans want us to go to that, they should let us know and we should do it if they want us to go. You think just going to put the idea, pressure huh? on you guys? A little what bit. is it? What does that say, Doug? About incomes, twenty to thirty k, thirteen under. 10? Oh, they're just These showing are the demographics. It looks like the most people, the, the majority they're of the like, people that go, are the naked are between the ages of uh, thirty six to fifty five. So there you go. Not too many sixty-six to eighty-year-olds, Adam. I'm, well, I'm sorry. Not about in your that. wheelhouse. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Totally dude. in your wheelhouse. Yeah. You're Easy, not gonna... dude. Soccer moms are my wheelhouse. That's forty. Uh, you like forty the... to fifty, dude. Oh, I thought it was a. Well, see the a little, little light on the eighteens for you, so. Sorry the about age... that. Yeah, yeah. Great, exactly. <laughs> sorry about that. The ages. Yeah. The ages move up though as you get older, though, Adam. <laughs> so what was considered older for you back no, then? No, that's the difference between you and I. Like <laughs> mine, mine still say normal. I'm getting closer to my soccer mom age, and so we have more to talk about. So when you're in your 60s, you're going to be into the younger ones then? You're getting, you're getting, well, yeah, technically. Yeah. So I will be into. He likes, you'll be into he likes 40. the ones with I'm just going to stay in that. I'm yeah. just going to stay in that wheelhouse as, as, uh, no matter how old I get. Where you, on the other hand, are creating a major gap what between are you talking about? your wheelhouse. No, what are you talking about? My girlfriend's yeah. not that much younger than soon, me. Soon, soon mm, your major. wheelhouse could be. Is that your daughter or is that mm, no. somebody you're into? That's not happening. That's not happening. <laughs> not uh, but I think we should go to Lupin. I'm down. I just want to see Justin naked. Doug, I know you do. That's why it's so awkward. Yeah. Doug, can we please time. can we please help some of these yeah. these fitness people out? Yeah, this absolutely. Another Let's way uh, to get me naked. Summon the bird. Today's quaw is being brought to you by Chimera Coffee. It's the only coffee that is infused with all natural nootropics for a cleaner, calmer, and more focused buzz without the crash. Click the Chimera link at mindpumpmedia.com and input the discount code MINDPUMP at checkout for 10% off. It's the motherfucking Qua. The eagle has landed. Qua. All right, our first question is from Adrian Morales Jr. Y'all been talking about imbalances with people working out with squats and deadlifts. What do y'all think about high school coaches using those lifts when it comes to strength training? With those exercises done wrong have long-term detrimental effects so to answer the last part how of the question, y'all think about that yeah so well you can't answer this you didn't play sports so you just sit this one out what are you talking about he's talking about Whoa. deadlifts and squats yeah it's sports in high school though coach that was that's teaching this so so you can't it's, it's exercise so you can't answer you definitely can't be the first one to answer it's this young is either kids. justin or me who answers this first <laughs> right. then well, you can put then they're gonna have to wait to get the wrong the right answer at the end <laughs> yeah, so uh, i had a terrible coach so I yeah. I think that's what matters more than anything else. So I do know that there there's some private schools and there's some high schools in our area now that have some legitimate high school coaches that are teaching good technique and good movements. And if that's the case, I think it's an excellent place to start at a young age working on the mechanics, you know, right. lightweight, working on the mechanics and just doing the repetitions. 
Now, that being said, I did not have that. I had a coach, a basketball coach that was telling us to lift. He was telling us to do calf raises all day long for, you know, for basketball because to oh, increase yeah. our vertical, you know, and wear strength like shoes. like the strength shoes, yeah. Yeah, so I'm wearing strength shoes and I'm doing calf raises all day wondering why my vertical isn't going up because I don't know how to squat. Uh, so, you know, it really, to me, it really depends on who who you get, right? I think, it, and and then knowing knowing that, like if your coach is sitting there and he is, really breaking down the mechanics and uh, paying a close attention to the mm-hmm. detail to your form and technique which i mean the concern there is like that is not like the the majority right so this is this is something that is an issue that <clears throat> you know is is worth talking about because when you're going through high school um and you're going through these sports programs a lot of these coaches they'll take they'll take programs from colleges or they'll take like um take you through like a program that they'll, they'll find online, I guess these days and, and kind of run you through it. But, uh, everybody just kind of doing squats and groups and no, no real, um, nobody there to kind of articulate all those different, uh, points to, to look out for and, and to, to show you like proper form and, and how to accomplish, you know, it's a really skilled move. So if they don't treat it as such, um, you know, there's a lot of long-term damage well, that can occur. And especially at that age, right? Yeah. At that age, you, you're really developing that that connection and that pathway, and you don't want to start. It's kind of like that, um, what they'll tell you, like uh, if you start golfing, right? Um, people will know, someone who's like a professional golfer will always suggest to somebody who's wanting to get into golf, to like take lessons first, yeah. like go get a pro, spend the money to have and someone. And I think that's the point really to drive home is, is to make sure that you educate yourself and to, to, to make sure that, um, you, you know, these lifts or you go seek out like a personal trainer or you go get some information yourself to, um, you know, make sure that <clears throat> when you're going through these mechanics and going through these these lifts that, um, you know, require a lot of skill, like you're you're very versed in this, and then hopefully you have a good coach that will reiterate these points. But uh, I mean, it, it, it's crucial that you get the education for yourself uh, to improve upon. But um, well, the the short answer for the end of this question was: Would those exercises done wrong? have long-term detrimental effects? Yes, of course. Any exercise done consistently in a wrong fashion is going to create uh, poor recruitment patterns and cause problems later on. But here's here's something interesting to think about. Uh, high school coaches have done strength training with these young athletes and have gotten away with it because they're dealing with young athletes. And younger kids can get away with things and can improve in spite of the fact that they're being trained wrong. Now that being said, here's something to here's something to kind of ponder over. Kids today present muscle imbalances and recruitment patterns that are a lot worse than kids of yesterday because mm-hmm. kids just aren't just less active. active. Yeah, I see uh, forward head and uh, you know uh, rounded shoulders and you know bad posterior pelvic tilts and anterior pelvic tilts and all these deviations. Now in kids, and I, I mean, you never saw that those mm. kind of deviate forward head in particular. I've trained some young kids relatively recently, and they'll come in. You're talking about a 15 year old kid, and they are just they've got forward head like like you would find yeah, on sit in them, sit in those fucking video games for 10 hours at a time. They're man. just not active like they used to. They're not playing like they like kids used to. So mm. then they go play sports, um, or they're going to go lift weights, and the coach is trying to have them do certain things and. You know, luckily there's a little self-selection because kids who play high school sports probably played sports growing up, but a larger percentage of them today are maybe doing it for the first time and they're mm-hmm. doing squats and deadlifts and they've just got all these poor recruitment patterns because they haven't been active like they were before. So the other, the they other- need to, coaches need to be more educated and I I have, I mean, got, yeah. for the, the vast majority of high school coaches I've run into... Uh, are not very good at training uh, the basic movements. Well, the problem I see too, and if you, I'm Justin, I'm sure you remember this, especially with football, yeah. is you get this competitive nature amongst mm-hmm. the kids too, where it turns like, you know, and I remember in my high school. It's the numbers you can produce. Yes, it was yeah. the 500 club, right? You know, yeah. who could bench, squat, and deadlift X amount to be over 500 pounds. And so the kids become so motivated on how much weight they can lift versus how well they can lift the weight. Right. And at that age, it is so more crucial that they focus on the technique of the of the movement and the lift than it is how much weight. Just like it would, like going back to the golf reference that, 
you know, if you're just learning how to golf, you you should not be like focusing on, oh, you're trying to break drive records. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I'm trying to hit the ball 300 and something yards. Like, no, you're just trying to make good contact with the ball and, and work on your swing. That will come later down the road, just like your mechanics in a compound lift, like a deadlift or a squat, overhead press, bench press, all these really technical movements. The, it should be about how, how well can I perfect this movement and how well can I control this weight, especially at that age, because you're really laying the foundation yeah. on how you're going to do this movement over the next 10, 20, 30 well, years. And these of compound lifts are so crucial because it's the baseline of strength that you know you're gonna pull from in in all and it, and it translates very well uh you know in a lot of these explosive type movements and um you know getting that kind of ground force that you need to generate. So I understand why <clears throat> you know coaches tend to add in like these these uh these compound lifts and then also like even sometimes power lifts um, to to get you know these these kid athletes to respond and get that kind of power and, and force that they can generate on command, but um, it it just really you, you just have to like Adam was saying you have to be you have to be conscious of of not overloading your body just to to, to produce uh, numbers and be competitive with that which is really hard for kids to to grab onto that concept well, because here's they're what kid, so just thrown into the, the competitive and, nature. Of and it. what kids understand is, oh, I'm going to lift more, so I'm going to be more effective at football. Right. The reality is control is what's going to make you more effective, mm-hmm. not necessarily just you know how much weight you can lift. And uh, it's an ex- here's an example. It's like you got this you know 17-year-old kid who can lift a lot of weights, got a lot of strength, and then he goes and wrestles his, you know, forty-five-year-old dad, who's not as strong, but his dad kicks his ass because his dad has been in his body for longer and has better control. And you know, they, there's a joke, right? Where they, what do they call it? old, old man, man strength? strength yeah. uh, you can have all the power in the world, but if the tires aren't connecting to the pavement, you're not going to go anywhere. Yeah. So your strength in the gym is going to be less translatable to the field mm-hmm. if you don't have good control. Somebody who can do a good controlled two hundred pound squat is going to have more effective ability on the field than some kid who does a sloppy, out of control, knees moving around, 250-pound squat. Even that 50-pound difference isn't going to make up for his lack of control. Well, and I'm not just talking about injury. Of course, you're, you're also reducing injury with that, but besides that, you're reducing your effectiveness. This is why we all agree, and God, I wish I, wish I knew what I know now, training as an athlete as a kid back in the days, because as crazy as it sounds – and I would have never desired doing this as a kid, I w- would have put myself in gymnastics. If I could go back, mm-hmm. I would have started in gymnastics, learned body awareness and control uh, that first, and then moved myself into you know power lifting and then Olympic lifting. Because I think if I would have laid a foundation like that, I, who knows where I'd be. I'll tell you what, if you're a high school coach uh, or a high school student, th- one of the best investments you can make, honestly, is to follow excellent programming Maps Prime and Maps Performance. If I was a high school coach right now, yeah. I would get those two programs and I would just use them on all the students so they could follow the, the right kind of programming, exercising, and priming right. would make a huge difference in their performance. And then add in like with the skills training, like so as you're building and, and you're changing your, your body and the, and the recruitment patterns, like now uh, making sure that you're, you're also like incorporating these skills. So we, so now uh, you can see how as your body changes, like I, I can still kind of keep in tune with my, my skill and yeah, make yeah. sure that I'm keep, keeping that point. sharp. So um, that's a good point. Cause if you gain, you know, 10 pounds of muscle and you're much stronger, but you haven't been practicing your skill, right. You actually become more. Uh, you, you become, you lose coordination. I went through this, you know, I went through this as, 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 a lot of times, like as you change positions or your coach kind of shifts you around and wants to to, to bulk you up or, or, or add weight, um, it becomes essential to make sure that your body moves the way that you know you, you desire it to move while you're um, you're focused on <clears throat> adding mass at the same time. Next question is from Christopher Jones IRL. If you are fresh out of college with no money, how would you go about opening your own gym? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't open if, a gym, yeah. that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, I'll, okay, so you want to buy a house and you got no money. So people who love to work out, love the iron, love the gym. I was one of those. I was a young kid, uh, you know, fourteen, and ever since I was fourteen, like my dream was to own a gym. But it wasn't because I wanted to be a millionaire. It was because I loved the gym. 
Um, and that's the attitude. If you think you're going to open a gym and it's going to make you super successful monetarily, the odds are pretty small. It's gyms typically don't make much money, and there's very few exceptions to that. So you, that's you, number one. Do you guys see how popular that is right now? I don't know how much. I know you guys are. As I follow more of these guys, right? That are these fitness Instagram celebrities, and this is kind of the transition they all do. They all uh, build their social they media, harness phone. all that, and. And put it into a gym and then they yeah. leverage it and then they get themselves a gym which i think is so crazy to me because it's the opposite of what i would do i would actually build that to work my way away from doing a brick and mortar business because we know how challenging that is to make a lot of revenue like you said that matters a lot right if all you care about is saying hey i have a space you know like you know it is it's neat to come into our facility and be able to train whenever we want to and do whatever we want to in fact i trained naked in here the other day when nobody was here because really? i could do yeah Gosh, we have it. cameras could, which could, which I, bar did I you could, do that I could, yeah i did that I sit, did you use the bench i always sit in sal's chair whenever yeah. i do that just uh, to, you know, i was piss like why off. does it smell in my yeah. chair yeah. Yeah. so i mean those things that's cool it's kind but of cheesy in here the overhead of a facility like this is ridiculous and to produce the amount of money to pay that off is crazy and then to try and grow it to make six figures or more you know that's a there's a lot of hustle and grind and then you just run out of hours in the day and i don't care if you're charging top dollar uh it you, you'll see if you do the math how many clients per hour you have to train when in. i own my when i owned my facility it was a small wellness slash personal training studio it was it would have been a lot easier to be a trainer renting space in there than to be the owner mm -hmm. to make money mm -hmm. right way more freedom could have made way more money i didn't have to worry about much stuff um so again if you're in it for money and you want you know there's a certain like you know lifestyle you want to have and it requires a certain amount of money going into a gym or buying a gym Probably not the best idea. Now, if you want to own a gym because you love yeah. gyms, you, you love you fitness, live there and, and be you, there, and you want to be in there because yeah. you do work a lot of hours oh, in a gym. Yeah. Bottom line, it's like owning a restaurant; like you're there all the time. You, you have to be there. Then go for it. Now, the way you go about it, first of all, if you don't have any money, I don't suggest you open uh, a, any business. You get you need a little bit of money uh, to do so. If you're going to leverage uh, something to get money to start a business might want to choose another business that's going to has a higher uh, chance of succeeding because if you go in there with a bunch of debt which you probably already have because you're out of college so you've got debt from college now you're going to get more debt because you have no money because you want to open a gym uh you're in for about five years well, of not making money let's talk about the experience because i've had a friend that you know i i kind of helped go through the process of getting certified and and really wanted to become a trainer. And, and then his first inclination was, well, I'm going to open this gym. I have this great concept in my head that would be awesome. And I'm like, you haven't even really trained people yet. Like you haven't like got all that time under your belt. You don't know the timing of like, you know, when a client shows up, how to run them through the program, like what the retention is there, like uh, how to market myself properly. Like, like, you know, what kind of forms do I need? The insurance, like all, like all these things can be accomplished uh, as a personal trainer, as an independent personal trainer, if you need to go that route, even uh, there's levels to this. So to, to say that, like, right. And I'm, and I'm judging just based off of like, maybe, maybe they do have this experience already, but as far as if they don't, and they're just coming out of college and they haven't put uh, that kind of time in already as a personal trainer, I would I would definitely caution and say, hey, I, I on my opinion, you should go, you know, immerse yourself into the gym setting, learn the business, go through the process, be the small man on the totem pole, work your way to the very top. Then the next step, you know, do like replicate that on your own as an individual learn how to find clients. Mm -hmm. Where do you get clients? How do you drum up the business of that? You know, and then if you're just amazing at that, now we can talk about. Well, that's, that's this, a great point. Because, no, that's, a, that's incredible advice. Yeah, that's a great. great and this point. is a, the exact advice that I gave to so many of my trainers that work for me, mm -hmm. and I don't know how many of them that I just kind of shook my head, and I and I was always supportive of anybody who ever worked for me and wanted to see the best for all of them. But inside, I knew that they would go off and they would fail because 
they were working for one of the largest fitness companies in the world. They had all the resources at their disposal. They had over 2,000 people walking in their gym every single day because the company was spending $25 million a year, something ridiculous like that, to advertise. So to be to build your business in a facility like that is is like a wet dream. It's the easiest thing in the world for a fitness trainer. So if you can't prove to yourself to be in the top, top 10 percentile, of that group of trainers working in that facility, you're you're fooling yourself to think that you're going to go off and start your own business because it's a hundred times harder than that. Mm-hmm. Harder than that. So, I think Justin's advice is brilliant: is go somewhere where you have a secure hour, secure hour hourly wage that they're going to pay you, and they have clients that they can feed you right away. Use the leverage from that company, even though you're not making top dollar, you're not being able to charge $150 an hour, whatever it is you want to charge the trainer, and you prove to yourself that you can work your way up to being the top trainer in that facility. You can build that type of reputation. Now you've kind of proven to yourself that you are that good. You could take some of those people and then start your business outside of that. Now, this is one way, and this is what I would tell I've told trainers for 10 plus years of my career. Now, where we're at now, and if you just came out of college, you don't feel like working for a gym with that, I would actually I'm I'm so fascinated with the social media world and the ability to connect to people virtually and what we can do. What I did with my, you, you, I could have used this uh, to do just what you're doing right now, the business that we currently built. So when I turned on my Instagram, it was for the purpose of building a fitness business around it. I had no intention to connect to people and date girls off of it. It was, I'm starting this thing to build a business because I had met other people that have built a social media following and have made six figures plus from an Instagram or a Facebook. So that motivated me to do this. Now, you could do this as a trainer where you, and I'll tell you, I used my fat to fit journey. So I documented my fat to fit journey. I would be posting pictures of my transformation, the progress of that on Instagram. And I would share with people what I was doing and all the knowledge that I had that I had obtained over the 15 years of my career. I would share that. And a lot of that was counter to the current culture that's around fitness right now and how to get in shape. So I knew that I would would be polarizing for a lot of people in the fitness industry. So I I gained some attention from that. And when you watch somebody who was at 20% body fat and you saw me drop all the way down to 2% and get on stage and compete, I knew I would gain a lot of traction. From there, naturally, people were asking me tons of questions and wanted information. So this is where I transitioned into my virtual coaching business. So from there, I built a website, Um, and then I paid somebody to do it all automated. So literally I would just get an email sent over to me where there's a questionnaire that people filled filled out. And I started off with, I believe I started with like, uh, I want to say 175 or $200 a month. And I eventually worked all the way up to where I was charging $500 a month for somebody to do coaching with me virtually. And that would be a great way to build capital and build a clientele that would then allow you to leverage over into a brick and mortar well, if that's you, really where you want to go. I tell go. you what, if you do the if you do the math, if you really figure this out, right? Cuz when back when I opened a gym, social media was non-existent. Do the math, right? If it costs, let's say it costs you on average, I don't know, 70 to 150,000 dollars to open up a gym, which is probably going to be the average, right? Wouldn't you guys agree about 70 to 150 grand a small facility? Yeah, I was gonna say a small on the, facility on the low end for sure. Yeah, a small one. Imagine if you took half of that, 30 grand and spent the same amount of time and energy and that much money on building a social media business, how much more payoff you would get. Oh, you wouldn't yeah. have an overhead. Totally. You wouldn't have rent. You wouldn't have to worry about all these trainers working for you. You probably would make a nice dent into the market. You don't need to be like the number one Instagram anything. You just need somewhat of a following and you'd make more money and have more freedom to do so. And the second thing is just kind of along the lines of what these guys are saying is – Running a gym, nothing will teach you how to run a gym like working in a gym for years. There's no school that you could do. There's no business school. There's nothing you can do that's going to prepare you for that. So if you come out of college and you're like, I love gyms, I want to just open a gym, you're totally going in blind. You have no idea what's going on and what goes into it. So definitely 100% will increase your odds dramatically of success if you work in a gym and succeed in a gym before you go open your first and I, I cannot uh, caution you enough that this model in my opinion is a dying model 
uh, the brick and mortar, 3,000 to 15,000 square feet, uh, you know, either private training that you have trained or a membership based gym is a dying model. Where technology is going, uh, where group classes, CrossFit, Orange Theory mentality, where you have this very, very small two to 3,000 square foot location, people pay a membership, there's group that's the classes. Way to do it. That is that is the model currently that's very successful. So just know you're going to be competing against that directly. Um, but even further along than that, which is why we've moved completely over into the social and virtual world, um, everything else is this way. It, fitness is just taking a while to get there because fitness is such a personal business. Well, you open up a 10,000 square foot gym, which is small, and you want to charge memberships, and you're competing with 30-something thousand square foot 24 fitnesses and LA fitnesses and goals mm -hmm. all within five miles who are m bigger, have more equipment and charge Cheap. less than you. Yeah. Right. They all charge less and than open, you. And open longer hours. Open longer. Yeah. I mean, more amenities. I mean, it's going to be very difficult. And yes, there's definitely going to be people who want a smaller feel and a better atmosphere, but not enough. Yeah, not enough. To make, you know, that, the kind of money you want. And people will not drive more than five miles from their home and, to a gym, typically, not, or to work. Not only right. have all of us done this already personally, but we also still have friends that are in the field and continue this hustle and grind. And it's a hustle, man. Oh, yeah. I did it for 12 years. Yeah, dude. it's a, it's not, it's, I think that I, this is part of the issue I have with all the bullshit on social media is they, they over glamorize all this shit. They make it sound like it's just this awesome. Oh, it's so awesome. I have my facility. It's so great. It's my place. And it's like, Okay, yeah, but your overhead is, you know, six to ten thousand dollars a month. You gotta be working ten to twelve hours every single day, six days a week, just to be able to break even. And it's not really scalable if you're somebody who has big goals financially. How do so, you scale that when it's you that's running the place? Yeah. Very difficult. I ran into that myself. I just don't I don't and I also I mean I know we, you know we just totally fucking scared know, this kid. We always like, do that. I know you went to college for four listen. years and this was your idea, but we just fucked yeah. that all off for you. I don't listen. you know, I don't want to be that guy for you, but yeah. you, you know, you need to be thinking, you know, if you're gonna be really successful in what you're doing, you need to be thinking three to five steps ahead of where everybody else is currently at. And just because you see, you know, you know, who just Bradley Well, it's like any other Bradley, business. Though. Bradley Martin, um, the lost breed, who yeah. else did I just see recently? Um, these are all Instagram famous kids or whatever that, that have now transitioned their huge following into opening a gym. And I sit there and I just kind of shake my head because I'm like, man, that's like why? Yeah, why? Yeah. That's, a, that's a lot of money. It's self serving. Or little return. Yeah, yeah, it's just self serving. I think um, it, it's a lot like any other business. I mean, you need to know the ins and outs, like, and you need to. You need to do the time and due diligence to uh, really investigate, uh, you know, the process and, and all the, you know, everything that goes into that. So mm -hmm. that's just why we caution. Quick interruption by our sponsors, you guys. Lots of people have been asking us how they can support the Mind Pump Mafia family. Our first one is our Chimera Coffee that we love. You guys go to ChimeraCoffee.com. That's Chimera with a K for 10% off. Don't forget Mind Pump at the checkout. We also have our Big Top Beard Company.com for 33% off. Also, Mind Pump at the checkout. checkout. Also, Brain FM. We talk so much about this for sleep and meditation. It's Brain.FM for 20% off. Also, Mind Pump at the checkout. You guys, we also talk a lot about books on here all the time. We're using that Audible. You guys can get a free trial, 30-day trial, plus one free audio book if you go to audibletrial.com forward slash mind pump. And then last, we get lots of people asking about Ben Greenfield's CBD supplement, so we hit him up to hook you guys up. You go to getnaturedblend.com forward slash mind pump for that discount. Next up is Devin Shredderson. How do you know if you have a decent amount of lean body mass for your size? Mm. You know what I like about this question is that it uh, it highlights some of the issues that people have with uh, exercise. So number one, there's what? definitely an essential, and I'll tell you, there's definitely an essential amount of, of muscle and strength that you need. So if you can move with good mobility control and you can do what you want to do and you're not hurting yourself and you're not exhausted all the time, you have the amount of muscle that you need. Now, when people ask this question, how do you know if you have a decent amount of lean body mass? Well, uh, who are you comparing yourself to? Right. I mean, it, it, do you like the amount of muscle you have? Then you're good. Then there's your decent amount. If you want more, then then build more. I mean, one of the one of the big issues we run into with fitness mm -hmm. is we compare ourselves to other people, mm -hmm. and we ask questions like, uh, "Am I, you know, am I? Is this a good strength that I'm at?" or 
am I am I lean enough or am I more am I muscular enough? And you end up comparing yourself to mm-hmm. uh, the freaks of the world who build lots of muscle and burn body, lots of body fat or maybe Photoshop every picture. Yeah. And this is a H-G-H. path. This is a path of unhappiness. It's a path of insecurities, and it will drive you to train yourself and eat in a way that is not uh, beneficial to your mental, emotional, and physical health. Right. So when you find yourself asking questions like this, you need to ask yourself, like, what am I looking to do? Who am I comparing myself to? Because there's only yeah. one you. Right. And that's well, you're the only one you should ask this to. That's it. You well, ask it to us. I also think that maybe the question's not worded ideally. Like, I, I think a strength for your size is a better question. Because I think there, that there's there's better markers for that as far as you know how much strength should I have for my size? I think there and again there, that's comparing like strength as compared to what? Well, it, it it is and it isn't. I I think you should be able to squat your body weight. But but that's compared to what? Like yourself, yourself. your body weight. But that's see that's my point. Like let's say you just want longevity. Good mobility. You like to hike. Yeah, but you okay, know, okay, okay. maybe you don't squat your body weight, I, but you got I, I all know that. I know that we we love to go as deep as possible on every question, but sometimes it's a basic question with a basic answer. And I think wording it lean body mass is that's super object objective. That is comp- having to compare yourself, but strength to your to your size. There is a, a decent ratio of squatting overhead pressing, you know, and I wish I remember what the the formula was for each one of those. I know what the formula is in, to consider yourself gym strong. Yeah. But uh, and and the number is like if you could deadlift twice your weight, you're you know, you've got the gym strength. If you could do no, sorry, three times your weight, you're really strong, right? If you could squat twice your weight, you're really strong. If you can bench one and a half times your weight, you're really strong. Well, that's all really strong. Uh, that's like, uh, those uh, numbers are the ones I know, but No, I'm talking about like but you should bare minimum. Like if you're so weak <laughs> If you're a 130 pound, you know, or 180 pound man, and you can't squat 95 pounds, do you have a strength issue, dude? That and that's not healthy. Well, for 95, long-term. I could see that's that. That's okay. So that's where I'm getting at. We don't need to go so deep and say that. Oh, it's it doesn't matter, and it's all about how you. That's so goddamn crunchy hippie, bro. Like you no, can no, answer no. the question no, no, without no. being you so. Didn't, obviously, you didn't listen to what I said. If I did you, listen to what you no, said. No, like, if you, you can move well and do what you want to do, and you've got good mobility good stability, you've got good ranges of motion, then you're fine. Then you're absolutely fine. Now, yeah, we could throw a number like if you're 180 pounds, you can only squat 95. You're probably not strong well, this enough. Is what I think that's what, the, you know, the poor kid here, I don't think he's, he needs a, a life lesson right now on a, on his level of awareness yeah. on, and we we know that. We talk about this on the show all the time. I think he's looking for percentages. Yeah, you get, know, a, get like, an idea like, you know, hey, yeah, am I... It's still arbitrary, so I'm kind of like, I mean, I'm with you on that perspective, Sal, as far as like, you know, it's it's relative. It's relative to what you want to accomplish, right? Like if if I feel like um, I, I want to have more strength and movement and support uh, if I'm doing a sport or if, uh, if I just want to look better, you know, like and I want to build a little bit more lean muscle mass, yeah. it's a different conversation. Yeah. So it, 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 it's all defined based off of what you create as your goal. That's so. what I'm saying. Like, how do we come up with well, like, not, the number? I, I'm not disagreeing. I'm not disagreeing that it's – I'm just saying that I think that we can give him more direction than just, mm-hmm. you know, hey, you're looking at it the wrong way. Like, it's, it's, like, a, it's how I feel about like BMI. You know, it's like right. – it's cool. It's like a it's, – it's a standardized thing for like physicians to kind of like assess like, oh, wow, well, you're kind of too heavy for your frame, but that doesn't work in all cases. And, you know? and I'll, I'll never forget. Especially I, for muscular people. I – I, when I did jiu-jitsu, there was this guy that I rolled with all the time, and I remember I took him to the gym. Now, this guy on the mat felt so fucking strong. Like, he'd grab you, and, and he'd have a grip and stability, and just he just he just felt very, very strong. And then we go to the gym, and he was, by gym standards, weak. Like, the dude couldn't bench over 100, and, I think it was over 160 pounds. He could barely deadlift over 225. Like, he just wasn't strong in the gym. But when you grappled with the fucker, he felt like he, like you were grabbing a piece of iron. And so it's hard. I mean, that's all I'm saying is like, what numbers do you come up with? It's very difficult. I think the well, only standard I, should be, can you do all the things you want to do with good comfort, mobility, range of motion? Because we can throw numbers out there, but... And I'm yes, definitely there's there's extremes, right? Like, yeah, if you can't squat, you know, your body weight, well, then you're probably weak, but... 
Uh, it's a very, I mean, what numbers do you come up with? Well, we can't. We can't give a specific number, but I think we can give more an answer than you're asking the wrong questions. I think that, mm. you well, okay, know, go. Tell, you to, do it, do it. No, I, I, it's collective. I'm trying to ask, I'm trying to get with you guys to say, well, what, you know, I think if I look at somebody, I would, I would not use their body fat percentage as a, is it a decent amount or not of mass on them? I would use their strength as a way to measure because I think that translates more into health mm-hmm. and are they strong enough for their size and body type? I think you should be able to squat at least your body weight. You should be able to at least deadlift that. And you should be able to get pretty close to that bench press. And if you're not at least close to your body weight on all those things, you're abnormally fucking weak and you should lift and you should get stronger. Well, benching your own body weight might be a lot for a girl, especially. That's that's that could be pretty difficult. Yeah. For okay. Female. So for a female, you could say yeah. you know sixty percent of that or eighty percent mm-hmm. of that. But I think between our uh, all three of us, our experience with you know training people, the thousands of people we've trained, I think we can give people a good idea of hey, these are good markers that you should be at for just overall health and strength. Now. Each person's going to be individual. If you have a jiu-jitsu goal and gripping and fucking strength and rolling is more important to you, well, then, yeah, who cares if you can't quite deadlift your your two times your body weight because that doesn't necessarily carry over into your sport or whatever the fuck it is you care about. But I just get the sense from this kid that he's asking a simpler question than getting deep into his relationship with his body. I mean, everybody needs work on that. We talk about that on the show all the time, like, Everybody need there. You need to work on the relationship with food, your relationship with exercise, your relationship with so your body. So what you want to give is the minimums. You should yeah, minimum be able you to want to yeah, marry just, it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah. just it's just the idea that listen, man. If you uh, if you are happy with your lean body mass, you're right. You're, if you're you're happy with that's all that matters. But it, for strength, I think somebody should be able to do those things. That's all I'm saying. That's mm-hmm. all. I'm, that's what I'm saying. And I feel like I'm trying to help this yeah. kid out with the question he's asking because I don't think he's asking it exactly what he wants. Do yeah, you, I don't know. It's it's per, so it's so uh, so relative. Like, yeah, I don't if know I, where to go with that. Yeah, I mean, I, there's no. I, I hate to tell you this, dude, but your numbers are don't they're they're very inaccurate too. Like, if you have a 75 year old, hundred and you know 30 pound woman. She's she could be fit as hell. She's not going to squat 130 pounds all the way down, so that doesn't mean she's weak. Maybe she could do body weight squats with good stability and control. Well, she's strong. It's super relative and almost impossible to give any you know real specific answer. That's why I said the question. It, it just it smells of the kind of stuff that we see in fitness where. You know, people are comparing themselves to everybody else. Yeah. They're like, hey, I feel really good, but they am I strong? shoot out ratios, like just generics all over the place. Yeah. And that's what we're I, I agree batting. with that. I mean, I know that's something that we we all talk about a lot is that, that we shouldn't be comparing ourselves. Those ma- those numbers are all arbitrary because everyone's different, you know, mm-hmm. and everyone's going to have different goals and different size and different age. But I think as far as, it, you know, Devin, if you answered the, asked this question a little bit better, I would have helped you out, bro. But I tried. I tried. <laughs> Be I more tried, specific. I tried. I tried. Come on, man. You're just going to have to work on your fucking questions, bro. Uh, That's your answer. Uh, <laughs> shit. All right. Next question is from Healthy, Happy, and Free. Do sugar detoxes really tame sugar cravings? Or do they result in what Sal calls symptom eruptions? I tell you what, I sure as shit want to go out and have some fucking donuts and cookies and ice cream after looking at her page. Oh, oh yeah, she's man. got a lot of, lot of, lot of oh my goodness, yeah, it's like dessert, dessert central on yeah. there, man. I'm just gonna bl- call you out on that one right yeah. now for sure. Um, so uh, two things. First, detox. I don't like the word because I, I know what she's talking about. She means like avoiding sugar completely for a while. So let's not use the word detox. Today we're going to hammer everybody on how they ask questions. Yeah. Well, you had to be clear because <laughs> detoxifying your body. We pick these body. questions. You're terrible at asking. Sorry, them. everybody. Yeah. yeah, this well, is happening. Well, you got to be clear because detoxifying yourself, uh, the medical I know, it's you know, definition. It's right? a bunch so, of bullshit. But she means I'm avoiding sugar. Now, a symptom eruption is actually a term that I, I learned. Um, I took a, uh, a course with a physical therapist that used to work with me. And we learned about, um, you know, food relationships and stuff. It was a really interesting course. And when people feel like they can't do something or they're being forced to restrict something, then they'll have what's called a symptom eruption. So if I'm, uh, uh, you know, if, if, if for example, I'm, uh, I, I say to myself like, okay, that's it. I'm not going to eat bad food anymore. I can't eat bad food anymore. It's, I just can't do it. My doctor said I can't, I can't do it. It the the you, it'll build up inside of you to where you'll have these binges, which are symptom eruptions. So number one, uh, make sure you you when you talk to yourself about this kind of stuff, make sure you understand that you're choosing this. It's not something you can't do. You're choosing it. That'll help 
maybe mitigate uh, any potential symptom eruption. Now, as far as sugar, avoiding sugar is concerned, sugar, and we just learned this uh, yesterday. We interviewed uh, um, Dr. Uh, Nicole Avina, which will air. I'm not sure if it's going to air before or after this episode. But she talked about how sugar releases dopamine in the brain, which all, by the way, all novel foods or new foods will do this, where you'll get a dopamine surge. But then when you eat that food again, you don't get that dopamine surge. Now, the, now sugar is different. Sugar will give you a dopamine surge each and every time you eat it, yeah. which is very similar to what happens with drugs. You do cocaine or you know you do other drugs, you get a dopamine surge every single time, and they think this is they strongly believe that this is one of the things that makes uh, per, uh, certain things addictive. Is that you constantly get that driver, you know that that neurochemical uh, dopamine that keeps you know uh, getting boosted. Well, when you eat lots of sugar and you get lots of dopamine your dopamine receptors start to downregulate. And what that means is the receptors that dopamine attaches to start to close off because your brain is trying to balance itself out. It's got all this dopamine. It normally doesn't have all this dopamine. And your body's always trying to stay in a, a state of homeostasis. So it shuts off receptors so that you don't get this surge of dopamine feeling in the brain. So you have more dopamine, less receptors. Now you're balanced out. But what happens when you cut sugar now? Now you go down to normal levels of dopamine, but you also have less receptors for that dopamine. So you start to get withdrawal. So people will get withdrawal symptoms from cutting sugar out. Now, if you do this long enough, and it can take a week, it could take a month for some people, depending on how bad they are, dopamine receptors start to upregulate again. So then you go back into this normal state where your normal dopamine affects you the way it's supposed to. And when you go eat... Uh, sugar, it becomes too sweet. And you'll actually find that you'll crave sugar less, uh, especially processed sugar, where you'll eat fruit and it'll taste sweeter and give you kind of the effects of what processed sugar did before. So do sugar, does avoiding sugar for uh, a, a certain period of time reduce sugar cravings? Absolutely. Definitely. If you go into it though thinking you can't eat sugar, it might do the opposite because then you're going to feel like you're restricted and you have to eat it. Now, I know Adam experienced you. You experienced this competing, right? You experienced this. What yeah, happened no, with it your- was it was extremely fascinating for me. My whole life, I was um, not really a fruit eater, and I really had a hard time getting the vegetables that I needed. And to be honest, it was just because vegetables tasted like nothing to me, and fruit was pretty close to tasting like nothing to me too. I just mm. and I, but I was also a major candy, ice cream, sugar eater. My whole life, I was even into adulthood and being a trainer. I just. I always trained hard enough, moved enough that I could allow these things in my diet and I wouldn't put on a bunch of weight. So my mentality was I wasn't concerned about it. And it really was crazy when I got into competing and I had to eat this really regimen diet for eight, 12 weeks on. And uh, obviously, uh, you know, Mike and Ike's were not a part of that. So mm-hmm. things like that were out of my diet completely. And I went through this that process, it was, it was tough, but it didn't matter for me. I was so competitive that I was driven. I was focused on the, the goal, which was to get on stage. So it was easy for me to say, okay, as much as I'm craving this, I can't because I'm competing. So I stayed dialed. I stayed dialed. And then I believe it was about three to four weeks for me the first time to get, uh, to the point where I actually didn't even want it anymore. And that's when I started to notice whoa, like a strawberry all of a sudden was like this explosion of flavor in my mouth that I'd never experienced before, ever, my entire life. I'd never tasted an apple, a banana, a strawberry, blueberries, even and vegetables now. Like, And now my body actually craves those things. I enjoy the hell out of them. And if I have candy, which is very, very rare that I'll even indulge in something like that, and it's not because I'm like, oh, I can't have that. It's more like, that's too much. Like something that I, I I was a kid, I could go to a movie theater and I'd get like three boxes of candy and I'd drill fucking three boxes of candy through a movie. No problem. Where now, if I indulge in something like that, I can't even finish a single box. Yeah, of half because, a box is enough. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's overload. It'll actually start to upset my stomach and it doesn't even taste as good anymore where I crave fruit, I crave vegetables. So if you're going to, you know, like Sal said, I'm not a fan of the word detox. If you're going to do this, you know, restrict from sugar, you've got to break through that. And that's going to be different for everybody. Some people, like he said, you know, I know I've had some clients, I can break it with just a fast 
do a 24. I was going to say fasting, man. Mm-hmm. That'll upregulate those receptors. Yeah. You have nothing. Yeah, t- 24, 48-hour fast. And then when we reintroduce food, we do, everything's all natural. So we get rid of all the processed fake bullshit, and we're eating all natural whole foods. And they're actually fine. Which is going- really what a lot of these like detox protocols are. Oh, that's all they really sense. are. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Except they, they decide to throw in some kind of supplement in there to sell, so it becomes like a, a stupid. protocol. Yeah. yeah, stupid. Bunch of assholes. Yeah, so... Uh, 30 Days of Coaching is available at mindpumpmedia.com. We highly recommend everybody enroll. It's free. It doesn't cost anything. It's a fantastic resource of fitness information, all categorized for you. We cover every topic we think is important uh, for fitness and health. Also, if you want to ask us a question that we answer on these episodes, like we just did, you go to Instagram. Uh, our page is Mind Pump Media. Now, we all also have individual pages. And each one of them is a little different, and we deliver fitness information in different ways. My page is Mind Pump Sal, Adam is Mind Pump Adam, and Justin is Mind Pump Justin. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.